Welcome to It's Your Business, St. Petersburg. I'm your host, Shrimati Oja Maharaj. The success of small businesses is important to the city of St. Petersburg. The city helps to make that success happen in many ways. One of the efforts aimed at businesses along Central Avenue is the Central Avenue Revitalization Plan. Joining us today to talk about the plan and how it helps is Dave Goodwin, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Dave, thank you for joining us today. Welcome. My pleasure, Srimini. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what is the Central Avenue Revitalization Plan? The Central Avenue Revitalization Plan is a little different from some of the other plans that we've done in the city along corridors or in neighborhoods or in other special areas in, the, in that it, it encompasses the entire Central Avenue corridor, uh, which goes basically from bay to bay. Tampa Bay to Boca Ciega Bay, over seven miles of corridor. So that is a, a different and a rather uh, challenging undertaking to begin with. Okay, uh, that's uh, quite uh, from bay to bay. Bay to bay. And 7.2 uh, miles, wow. What did, why, why was the plan created? Well, there are many opportunities along that corridor, mm -hmm. and we felt like uh, we weren't taking full advantage of those opportunities presently. And first step in beginning to look at what the opportunities are and what you can do to, to expand upon those opportunities and enhance the corridor is to do a plan. Get a plan, get a vision for the area. So that's the purpose of the Central Avenue plan is to have a plan with a vision uh, for the entire corridor. And the corridor, uh, the concept was address the corridor as a whole uh, in some way so that there's a consistency and a, a unified vision for the entire corridor. Yet within the corridor, there are seven, distri seven districts within that corridor that are each unique, have different characteristics, and add to just kind of the vibrancy and, and the variety of things that go, along, go on along the corridor. That makes it very difficult to create a vision for that plan area, isn't it? It was a different kind of plan to do it. It was very, uh, uh, it was challenging. But at the same time, it was a unique opportunity that, that allowed us to look at some things in ways we hadn't before. You mentioned it's got seven districts, 7.2 miles, and from bay to bay. Can you give us a little bit uh, more information on the demographics of the area? I can. Uh, probably the demographic that sticks out the most is that there are 10,000 employees working along the corridor. And we talk about the corridor. It includes Central Avenue, of course, and the First Avenues North and South. So those three major east-west roads comprise the entire corridor. So within that corridor, 10,000 employees. So it's, it has a significant economic impact on the community. Within the, those 10,000 employees, there are uh, 1,300 businesses, and about 2,000 people actually live within the corridor. So there are some people living there, but more employees than residents in the corridor. From what you're saying, Central Avenue to the city of St. Petersburg seemed to be one of the major thoroughfare for the city. Can you talk a little bit more about that and with your boundaries? Absolutely. Uh, the corridor probably was the first major corridor in the city, especially mm -hmm. east-west. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of the center of the old trolley system back in the day. So. So western ends of the city at the end of the trolley lines were among the first areas of the west side of the city to develop. Uh, so that trolley line created a connection east and west. Mm -hmm. uh, the subsequent roads that were built, First Avenues and Central, continued to reinforce that connectivity between east and west St. Petersburg. And then ultimately when bridges were built, out to the beaches as well. So it connects the St. Petersburg market to the beach market and the tourist market as well. Um, and also, Along the corridor, all the major north-south streets cross Central Avenue. 66 Park Street, 58th, 49th Street, 34th Street, 4th Street, 16th, all of them cross Central Avenue. So it's kind of where north meets south and east connects to west. So it, it is a Central Avenue, Central Corridor in the community. Excellent. So, and again, you have 22nd Street South, again, which runs and abuts with uh, Central Avenue, and on those areas you also have, you talked about uh, Central Avenue being, you know, very composed of many various districts, yes. but also you have two main streets abutting the area, which is your Grand Central District, as well as the 22nd Street South District. Um, what are some of the most significant changes since this plan was developed? Well, the plan's only been around now for about four months, so uh -huh. 
Uh, many things have been going on along the Central Avenue corridor over a number of years. Um, the Grand Central District, the uh, Edge District, uh, a lot of streetscape work, a lot of changing in the zoning and the makeup of the street, diagonal parking being installed, changing the, the street makeup from a five-lane kind of pass-through thoroughfare to a two-lane diagonal parking, slow the traffic down, uh, stop in at the businesses and it, to make it more of a pedestrian friendly, more retail, vibrant kind of uh, area. Um, that, so years, going back years, the city has invested heavily in Central Avenue, never to the extent of looking at it <clears throat> in its entirety from east to west. Uh, so some of the things that we've got going on right now uh, include enhancements to uh, additional pedestrian crossings, textured crosswalks, uh, the uh, mast arm street signals, those dark brown signals are, are going up, replacing the ugly span wires, which is also a safety improvement because they are hurricane resistant as well, but they also look good. And that's part of what we want to do with the corridor is to enhance its image uh, and its attractiveness. Uh, you know, a lot of people drive the corridor. So uh, they, per they form their perceptions of St. Petersburg based on what they see from major corridors a very common effect in all major cities. So it's very important to make those corridors look good, to give St. Petersburg a good look and a good perception to our residents, our visitors, people who may want to be investing here. And, and that goes to, you know, to the mayors. One of the mayor's main themes is, is creating environments, uh, environments for investment, environments for quality of life, uh, environments uh, to create and attract jobs. Uh, and the Central Avenue corridor, those kinds, creating those kinds of environments underpin a lot of what we're doing on the corridor. In addition, it sounds as if it's a huge en enhancement for the individual businesses because they gain so much uh, when you revitalize an area in terms of their customer base. Um, one of the things you talked about also is um, in Central Avenue plan is the differences along the area. You, it seems as though from talking to the various business districts, the city has had a huge part to play in this. Can you t give us a little bit more information on that? Yes, there, there, there are seven districts up and down the corridor. And really one of the key to successes of any business district is the strength of the businesses within that uh, district. Uh, and one of the things that we encourage is that those districts organize. They create an entity. They begin to uh, think about themselves as a whole versus just their individual business. Because as the area around the individual business improves, it's going to help bring, bring more businesses into the, into the area. So looking at uh, working with the business districts and the organizations and, and strengthening those organizations is a critical component to the plan. Um, and in the plan, uh, we are recommending uh, a tried and true kind of business district organization technique, which is called the Main Street Method. Uh, and we have a great example of, of a business district in St. Petersburg uh, that uses that right now on Central Avenue, and that's the Grand Central District. They've been up and running now for about 12 years. Uh, they started with a, a vision plan, uh, the Central Avenue Tomorrow plan back in, I think, 1999, uh, and they kept at it. Uh, they formed their group uh, of core people that worked very hard uh, to develop the district uh, in terms of its attractiveness, marketing, creating events, um, economic restructuring, uh, facade treatments, landscaping in the corridor, all those kinds of things. Um, and the city has been their partner all along uh, in ways we can help fund some of the projects that are in the public rights of ways. Uh, in other ways, they're organizing their own events and marketing the, 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 those events and bringing people into that district and creating a more excitement and vibrancy and, and more dollars flowing through those businesses. So it's not just the city, it takes really the, the various organizations to really move this plan and to get you where you are today, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, it is not just the city. Okay. We are partners, mm -hmm. but uh, those, those individual business districts and the individual people, that's really what makes it happen. What does the city plan to do in the future for the plan? Well, the plan has a number of key components to implement over time. Um, and we are implementing some already, some are funded. And going forward, we are doing some of those mast arms. Uh, we are doing some of the intersection and treatments. 
uh, with the crosswalks and the countdown signals to help create a more pedestrian friendly environment. Um, we are also moving toward uh, improving our transit facilities out there and, and, and transit is a big part of this plan and we'll get to that. But right now there's a funded uh, project to put decorative uh, bus stops on Central Avenue. And that, that's part of having better facilities for individuals to use and it's also part of, of, of helping to create the brand and the identity for the district. If we have those kind of interesting artistic bus shelters, um, that kind of sets the area apart and, and, and makes it more distinctive. So those are ongoing right now. Um, we have the Central Avenue trolley that's going on right now, uh, which is a higher level of transit service, I think, than anywhere in Pinellas County. Uh, that transit service, spearheaded by Council Member Danner, uh, provides 15-minute headways up and down the corridor that connects the pier all the way to St. Pete Beach at the hurricane. Mm -hmm. So, and it runs early in the morning and later in the evening. So, uh, that kind of transit service is something you can build upon. Uh, it creates reliability. It creates that frequency of service that that makes it more convenient for people to use. And it's branded up by, in its own right. It has different color buses. There's, you see the yellow and red buses, you know it's a trolley, you know where it's going to go, and you know it's going to come back by uh, in not too long. So uh, that, that, is, that is a key component of the Central Avenue plan is in improving the transit service to that area, and we'll get to that in a minute. What I heard you say is um, connectivity. Yes. That seems to be one of the key words in, that air, in, in this plan. In addition, you've got several neighborhood associations and districts abutting the plan. So you've got you know, the residency there in terms of creating that connectivity and for that ridership for these plans. In, I understand you have a Central Avenue Council uh, in terms of implementation of the plan? We do, uh, and we're, one of the key recommendations of the plan was to establish the Central Avenue Council mm -hmm. as kind of the overall business community group that would take leadership in implementing the plan over time. Mm -hmm. um, they have met once, they have a second meeting coming up, and the city will work uh, in partnership with them to, uh, to facilitate what they want to do in, in implementing the plan. And the plan, there's a lot of uh, room for creativity in the plan. It, there's a lot of unspecified kind of projects mm -hmm. that we expect in working with the Central Avenue Council and in, in the individual districts that will get more detailed ideas and, and plans and designs for things like streetscape improvements, uh, marketing plans for the corridor, uh, working in partnership with those groups. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful. This sounds very exciting. If someone wants to get involved in that council, um, how can they do that? Um, the Central Avenue Council is just getting started. I mean, they can contact um, our office mm -hmm. and we can advise, you know, when that group is going to meet. Okay. Um, so okay. That, that's a good way to do it right okay. there. Um, uh, excellent. And that is... Uh, our Economic Development Department uh, number, that is 727-893-7100. Um, 7100, 7100 yes, that's Yes, that's it. correct. Okay. Development and implementation of the Central Avenue Plan wouldn't succeed without the hard work and dedication of the business districts and the members. Central Avenue is a major connector in the city of St. Petersburg. It's where North meets South and East meets West. Well, we see it as a real opportunity uh, for uh, the district and uh, Central Avenue um, at, to bring people from the beaches to downtown. The, uh, the largest initiative for most cities is always uh, to uh, highlight the downtown area, but there is so much more to St. Petersburg than just downtown, and this is an opportunity for the beaches to come through Central Avenue, see that what's coming in before they get to downtown. Seven business districts connect the corridor, starting with the downtown core district located from Tampa Bay to Fort Street. This very active district focuses mainly on retail. The next district is the Central Arts District, formerly known as the 600 block. 
The Central Arts District is from 4th to 9th, and all along the Central Avenue corridor, and um, it's a collection of businesses like restaurants, to art galleries, to gift shops, to um, boutiques of all kinds, a uh, couple bars, tattoo shops, uh, but the overall theme is just an eclectic business mix. The start of the revitalization of this far down Central Avenue was the 600 block. About three years ago, uh, they were going to knock this whole place down and build condos, and instead it became a thriving arts district. Um, we kind of refer to it as a low rent district. You know, they, they let us in here for lower rent that you could find on Beach Drive or Forest Street, and it really allowed people who couldn't open up galleries and boutiques before to have a place. And once this took off, um, we really wanted to share the enthusiasm that uh, the city had for the 600 block and so we decided to reach out to our neighbors on each end from 4th to 9th and um, pull everybody in and kind of create a district that could thrive off of um, what we were able to accomplish. Another up and coming district along Central Avenue is the Edge District. It flows from Martin Luther King Jr. Street to 16th Street between 1st Avenues North and South. The Edge District has a history dating back to the beginning of the race almost. Um, when the, the Central Avenue Beautification Project was started and the race first uh, made Tropicana their home, the Edge District was actually called the Dome District. And um, over the past few years, it kind of fizzled out and, and certain things never came to fruition. And we've had several different groups um, come together and uh, basically try to create a business district. But there's obviously been a lot of changes with the economy and businesses have come and gone. Um, the past year, the Edge District uh, has employed a lot, or employed a lot of different tactics, including um, the district name change. The um, membership um, committee was voted in, and we're in the process. We're still in our young process, but we've got a lot of eager, committed business owners and members who are excited to contribute. Continuing along Central is one of the most successful districts, the Grand Central District. It goes from 16th Street to 31st Street. The Central Plaza District reaches from 31st Street to 37th Street and features mostly national chains. The Professional District encompasses from 37th Street to 58th Street. This area contains mostly professional offices and does not have an organized association. Central Avenue ends at Boca Ciega Bay with the West Central District, a newly formed association aimed at bringing more business to the west part of the city. While the corridor connects all the districts, each one is unique. Well, our district is unique because of the type of businesses within it. We're just on the edge of downtown, hence the name Edge. Edge also stands for entertainment, dining, gifts, etc. That really sums up what we are, and the uniqueness is the variety of businesses and one-of-a-kind businesses, you know, the lack of big box chains that you'll find within the Edge District that allows people to have a one-of-a-kind shopping experience and see businesses they're not going to see anywhere else. The Grand Central District is one of the two Florida main streets of St. Petersburg. It started off as a community initiative in 1999 between the neighborhoods surrounding Central Avenue, and as the neighborhoods continue to be revitalized and started growing and, and economically coming back. They wanted to see the Central Avenue area uh, start supporting the neighborhoods. So that initiative started in 1999 as the Central Avenue Tomorrow Plan. And uh, that grew into us applying in 2001 for a Florida Main Street designation. And uh, receiving that, then we became an official Florida Main Street and a national uh, Main Street. The Main Street method is key to the Central Avenue Revitalization Plan. It focuses on a four-point approach of organization, economic restructuring, design, and promotion. Well, being at Florida Main Street, we actually have a very active community volunteer base that works off the Florida Main Street four-point approach, and there's committees for promotions committee, which is what I do. There's economic development committee. There is a design committee, which is, has brought many of the designs that we have today. And we also have the organization committee that keeps all those committees together. So what makes us unique, there's, there's only two of them in St. Petersburg. And uh, uh, 
we think this approach has made us very uh, active and it has helped greatly to the econo economic development of the area. The central revitalization plan affects us in a lot of ways because number one, it's beautification, makes this area more appealing, makes it more friendly to consumers and safer for consumers. And also, um, it makes other businesses want to be a part of this area. They see the city is committing to putting things here and bringing um, you know, beautification projects to this area, and that makes it more attractive to other businesses. Being one of the newer districts along the corridor, um, obviously we're very enthusiastic for any kind of revitalization because we're kind of already in that enthusiastic mentality because of our own um, new newly renovated um, spaces. But, um, you know, it just means a lot that the city really sees and, and takes interest in what's going on on Central Avenue. Uh, I'm a long time, um, I've been here my whole life. My mom was here and dad were here. My grandparents were here. Same with my husband and his family. My, um, I have had family that have been working or owning businesses in downtown St. Petersburg for over 40 years. And so to see the process of where um, downtown and Central Avenue have come, it's obviously a community effort among the business owners, but we definitely could not have done it without the city. And so for them to continue to pour into us and really stay interested in and what's going on and having these these um, meetings constantly and keeping us all up to date it just it means the world to, to small business to have a city that is so invested in our future it's not only the commitment of the city but the commitment of the business owners that will make the central avenue revitalization a success I am very proud of our district because um, we have a lot of enthusiasm at all the meetings that the city puts together. I look around the room and it, it, it is a lot of our central arts people. We're very enthusiastic of what, how we can bridge that gap um, between the artist community and the city. And so I think, and it's important for them to get our point of view as well. So I think that we, we definitely bring a lot to the table because again, we are kind of, we have more of the creative mentality and, and instead of just strict business, which I think to, really needs to come together to make um, the central uh, corridor revitalization work. You know, we, we depend on the city to come with the numbers and, and the, the strict business plan. And then I think that they're really interested to hear what we have to say. Basically, our business association is composed of all business owners and the board is, uh, consists of, of people who work in this district. Um, we are committed to becoming a voice for this district, uh, expressing concerns with the city about issues we may have, and the city has been very responsive in providing us with people to talk with, people who have, uh, representatives of the city have come to our meetings and allowed us the opportunity to communicate our concerns, and I'll tell you what, they've, they've met us more than halfway on a lot of occasions, and I'm excited to see what else uh, we can work together on. And by working together, businesses and the city can bring about change. There's been a lot of changes, and for one of the first steps that we tried to do in Grand Central District is try to change the image uh, of, of a downtrodden Central Avenue, uh, and uh, by putting in the pots and the acorn lamps in our cooperation in, in conjunction with the city, we've, we have some nice landscaping on the sidewalks, we have acorn lights, and it's continuing. So the old adage, image is everything, uh, um, it does, it makes a big difference. And our image has changed quite a bit. People enjoy coming into the shops now. We have a lot of artists moving in, uh, along with artist uh, uh, initiative. Uh, Historic Kenwood takes a lot of active participation. Our neighborhood has really bought into being their district, and that's what we want to be. We want to be the neighborhood district, and I, we see that happening. As you can see, the business owners involved in the plan are very enthusiastic about seeing it succeed. Dave, what is being done for other parts in the city in terms of the business corridors? Well, we do have uh, a business corridor program through the Business Assistance Center mm -hmm. with uh, your team working mm -hmm. on that to stay in contact with businesses on a regular basis so that they know they have a, uh, a place to go with their questions to get answers to help them through their day-to-day -day business activities, to make them aware of some of the, the programs that we have available, training, incentive, uh, whatever it may be that may, we may be able to help them with. Mm -hmm. Connect them with other departments in the city uh, be it police or codes, whoever they need to, to work with. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're also 
um, about to embark on another corridor plan um, uh, beginning next month, in fact. And the target area is the 34th Street South Corridor, which is defined as from the north end, 22nd Avenue South, and to the south end all the way to 54th Avenue South. So we're excited about getting working in that area. There are unique uh, opportunities and challenges there, and, and we're excited about working with the groups down there, the neighborhoods and the business owners. Wow, that's very exciting. So you said again for that boundary, is it, you said 20 22nd Avenue North to 54th Avenue okay. North, right along 34th Street South. Okay, very good. So 22nd Avenue North to 54th Avenue South. Yes. Excellent, excellent. And what are some of the things? How does that contrast, for instance, with Central Avenue? Do you see a similarity or any sort of differences? You know, it's, it's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. It's a very different kind of corridor. It's uh, seven lanes wide, three lanes each direction with a center turn lane. So it's it, Central Avenue has more narrow streets, grid, uh, block pattern. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more adept at being connected by various modes of transportation. 34th Street is very auto-oriented, um, so it creates a different environment to work with in the beginning. But that means different solutions and different creative ways to, to help enhance and, and, and create an image, identity, character, and destination uh, for that area going over, over time. One of the things I observe is in terms of the density on certain parts of Central Avenue. It's different to 34th and also in terms of the jurisdictions. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, who owns the roadway and that sort of thing? And sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Central Avenue is part uh, city jurisdiction and part county jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Actually, west of 34th Street is county jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So when we get to work in the right of way there with any streetscape improvements as planned in the plan, we'll need to go to the county and get those permits. Mm -hmm. um, that also, that section of Central Avenue is, is targeted for a significant increase in development rights, and particularly for residential intensity and de uh, density. Uh, the idea being uh, we want to connect our infrastructure investments, current bus service, and the planned bus rapid transit bus service uh, with higher density. Mm -hmm. um, it creates the opportunity for for less dependency on automobiles, uh, more use of, usage of mass transit, and higher intensity infill development within an existing urban area. So it's good on a lot of uh, levels as far as sustainability and green development. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that, and we're very excited about um, uh, you know, increasing that intensity and seeing more transit and better transit service for the area. All right, and in terms of 34th Street, um, that's going to be a whole different ball game. In 34th Street country. is a state road, mm -hmm. um, and we've done a lot of work in state roads around the city. 4th Street's a great example, 34th Street on the north side, we've done some work there. Uh, so you know, we can work with the state and, and identify some improvements and work with the state to uh, get those uh, implemented over time. Wonderful, this is very, very exciting. And again, if folks are interested to get involved, in uh, on 34th Street South, um, are you looking for what sort of involvement? Businesses, residents, what sort of involvement? All of that. Okay, All and then they can call the same number again, 893-7100 or 893-7146. Thank you very much, Dave, for joining us today. If you would like more information about the Business Assistance Center, please uh, go to stpete.org forward slash BAC. I'm Shrimati Oja Maharaj. See you next time on It's Your Business, St. Petersburg.